Okay, next one of the lambda functions. We are now at B. More specifically, we're at binary here. So let's start by with reading the definition here. So it says that binary wraps a function of any arity, including nullary. So nullary, I would guess, is taking uh, no arguments. Remember that unary is taking one argument. Binary, as we're talking about now, is taking two arguments. I guess you could say ternary or something like that for three arguments uh, and so forth. But, but then nullary probably means taking no arguments. So anyways, uh, wraps a function of any arity. And, and remember, arity is the number of arguments that a function takes. So wraps a function of any arity, including nullary, in a function that accepts exactly two parameters. Any extraneous, extraneous, any extra? any extra parameters will not be passed to the supplied function. Okay, so remember, we talked about this before, like, uh, let me just remove all of this stuff. So like, if you have the uh, native add method, right, if you have math.add, so let's actually do a uh, console log, and then we'll log something from Oh wait, was there an add method? 2030? Does this even no, sorry, of course, there is no add method, sorry. <laughs> what we had was, uh, sorry, I'm confused. What we had before was was max. So in JavaScript, there's a native uh, max method. So on the module math, there's a method called max where you can pass, where you can pass any number of arguments. So, so it's variadic, it can take any number of arguments. So if we say 10, 20, 30, 40, and then we console log this, you can see that we get back uh, 40 because 40 is the maximum number. And of course, 40 doesn't have to be last here. We still get 40. If, it, if it's not right so so that's math max so so it takes any number of arguments right and and um, I guess I mean if you're in a dynamic language this is sort of the power of a dynamic language like I, I would assume this is a bit tricky in a statically typed language if you don't have currying and yeah even with currying I guess it's a bit tricky because you don't really know when you've reached the final argument anyway my point is that you can invoke uh, this function with an arbitrary amount of uh, arguments and and if you're in a dynamic language then you probably probably want that power. But sometimes maybe you, for some reason, want to restrict it. So you want to say that, okay, I want to have this specialized max. So I want to have this like uh, max pair uh, or, or, or max from pair, I guess, is equal to uh, math dot, I mean, if, we could just do it this way. I mean, if, if we do it uh, sort of point free, I mean, max from pair is equal to math max, right? And, and now I can call this instead of math of max, I can say max from pair, and I can pass 10 and 20, and I get 20 back. But I, I can also pass 30 here in, in the end. And, and then I, I get 30 because 30 is max. But that makes no sense. Because what I wanted to express is I wanted to express pair, right? This, this notion of pass me two arguments, and I'll give you the, 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 the largest one or the greatest one of these two. So actually, I would have wanted this to respond with 20 and not with 30. And, and this is the way we can use uh, binary or, or here is where we can use binary. So, so let's actually let's look at the type signature here. So it says that given that you pass me a function that takes any argument here, but I guess I mean, so I guess they're a bit inconsistent in the in the documentation here, because sometimes they've used this uh, dot 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 notation. So I assume maybe they were actually intending to to use that here, but don't take my word for that. But I assume this would not mean just any type, but rather any number of arguments of, of any type. So given that you have some a function that that takes any number of arguments and returns something of type C, you will get back a function that accepts exactly two arguments, something of type A, something of type B, and then uh, returns something of type C. And of course, mathmax matches that definition in the sense that you can pass it any number of arguments and you get back uh, something of type C, which in the case of mathmax happens to be a number, but then you will get back a, a function that only accepts two arguments and not an arbitrary amount of arguments. So let's let's look at that. So what we would do then is we would say r dot binary and wrap math max in that right and let's look at what we get so then right and this works we get 20 and not 30 right remember we said we wanted 20 here but then the maximum number if we look at all of these arguments is actually 30 here but we didn't want 30 because we wanted to say actually i will not want to care or i don't care about all of these other arguments that that come afterwards and as you can see i mean it, this works like 20 is now the greatest number and of course i mean if we had 10 here and 20 here this still works or, I mean, for an arbitrary number. And so yeah, that, that's, that's pretty powerful. Let, let's, let's think about this. Let's, I wonder whether we can invoke it like this. No. 
So, so when they say in a function that accepts exactly two parameters, they literally mean exactly two parameters. They don't mean in a sort of uh, curried fashion. So we can't partially apply with the first number, expect to have a function. So probably if I do this, I mean, it will probably invoke math max with a single argument. Ah, and then we get not a number, but then let's think about which or how does math max actually work. So like if we give it 20 and 10, like, I mean, now we're thinking about the native ma math max from JavaScript. So 20 and 10, then I get 20 back. But if I only pass 20, huh, I actually get 20. So with binary, we've actually in some sense, not made it worse, but made it more constrained. So if we say r.binary, so I'm just inlining this. So let's, let's remove that, right? Uh, so if I say our binary of math max, we get not a number when we pass 20. I mean, probably doesn't matter if I pass foo here. I mean, so my confusion is around why we get not a number rather than say undefined because clearly it makes sense that we're getting that we're not getting 20 back because we haven't supplied all of the arguments that the function actually expects but the question is why we get specifically not a number but let's actually let's let's quickly dive into this into the source code of this function just to try to understand whether we can sort of figure out that so let, let's see here so binary is defined as a curried function uh, that takes a function Ah, and it's implemented in terms of n ary, where where n ary or, or the number for n ary is two here. So so actually this is pretty interesting. I mean we can't we can't really understand this without uh, digging into n ary. So, so actually I mean let's just jump back here and start to talk about that as well. So n ary and unary they're saying see also these two functions, right? So unary as we talked about is is for one, right? So if binary is two then unary is one, and n ary is for n, right? So it's like for for three or for ten or for a hundred or I mean, you probably don't want a function that accepts 100 arguments, but you see the point. So n is like of arbitrary length. Uh, no, sorry, not arbitrary length. You construct a new function that has a particular arity, some specified arity, but, but not arbitrary as in very adic. So, so the function has an arity is my point. Anyways, so, so let's look at unary, right? So unary, they're saying, let's actually, if we go back and forth here, let's look at the type definitions here. So binary and unary, and you can see unary looks the same, except that we have in the return function here, or in the function returned, there's a single argument here rather than two arguments, right? So in binary here, we have two arguments, and in unary, we have one argument here. So, so I mean, if you understand binary, you probably understand unary. So, so let's instead look at uh, n ary because it's a bit more interesting. So here, the initial function takes two arguments, or it can also be partially applied with the first argument. So the first argument is a number, and then the second argument is this function that we've talked about before. So in this case as well, we pass a, a function that takes an arbitrary number of arguments and produces an a and then you get back a function hmm, so this is a bit tricky unfortunately we can't get back this information from the type system i mean we get back something that looks the same because again it's n ary so we don't know in, in sort of the type system here what what the arity of the resulting function will be or, or or of the function returned will be which is sort of the i guess the the strengths of a dynamic language but also the perils or the the, the drawbacks or of a dynamic language. But anyways, let's let's read the definition here. So, so it says wraps a function of any arity, including nullary. So the same. So they're saying in the same way as 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 for binary. So wraps a function of any arity, including nullary, in a function that accepts exactly n parameters, right? So I mean, the only difference here is that we're saying in binary here, we're saying in a function that accepts exa exactly two parameters. And now we're saying in a function that accept accepts exactly n parameters, any ex extra parameters will not be passed to the supplied function. So it's literally the same definition, except for that number. And yes, yeah, so, so of course, in our example here, instead of doing binary, we could have done n ary of math max, and then we first need to supply the number, right? So if we say two, and then we say math max, and then we supply 20 and 10 here, this should work fine, right? Then we get 20. And let's just flip this to make sure that it works fine, right? It, it still works fine. And we could have said three here, for example. So now we're saying accept exactly three arguments, but then what happens? Then we get not a number back, right? Because we haven't actually applied it to three arguments. So if we pass the third argument, now it works again. So now, now let's dive into this thing. Why? So now we get a number when we have three arguments, but if we remove, if we don't pass all of the arguments that we need, why do we get not a number back, right? So, so, so let's now dig into the source code of nary. Uh, just very briefly. Yikesy. 
Yes, and now we can actually see this is pretty interesting. We can see that it's, it seems like it's probably actually not allowed to run this with a, a number greater than 10. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, first argument to... Sorry, my uh, camera is in the way here, so I can't really read all of this text. <laughs> this is a pretty stupid setup, but, um, but it says that the first argument to n array must be a non-negative integer not greater than 10. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, for good reasons. I mean, they're saying that it makes no sense to construct a function that takes more than 10 arguments. If you're doing that, you have other issues and you should try to solve those issues. But anyways, why do we get not a number back? So if we just look at this, right? So these cases are all the cases of n. So an n here is the n in n array, right? So so in our case here, it's it's this three, right? This three is, is uh, it, it's the arity that we're trying to force the function into or wrap the function with, uh, I should probably say. So, so then we would end up here in this case, and we would then return a new function that takes three arguments where we've called them a0, a1, and a2. And then we would just take take this function that was passed in here as the second argument, right? So this is the function definition of n area where we first have n and then we have fn. And then we simply call this fn with the context. I mean, I guess it's like the binding context. This is, this is a different discussion, but call this from native JavaScript. And then we simply pass all of these different arguments. So actually, I would assume, ah, so here's probably what happens. We are calling it with all of the arguments, even though we haven't supplied them, right? So when we say specifically, when we specifically say three here, and then we say call math max, but I only pass two arguments, then because of the three were in this case, but I've actually only defined this and this, which means that this, this is probably undefined. But when we call the function, we will pass the third argument anyway. We will pass this a2 anyway. And if that's undefined, probably what happens is that mathmax, the native math.max, responds with not a number because one of the arguments that we passed it is not a number. So, so let's actually try that out, right? Like if we just, oh, we don't need to drop into node, we could just try it here, right? If we say mathmax uh, 10, uh, 20, right? Let's just start here, then we get 20. But if I pass undefined here, yeah, then we get not, an, not a number. Uh, and if I pass uh, some string here, let's look at that that's also not a number, right? Or like an object. Yeah, so that's definitely what happens. So we're breaking math.max because we are forcefully passing that argument, but it's not a type that is valid as, as input for math.max. And this is why math.max crashes quotation marks and responds with an, uh, sort of an unexpected type. But anyways, I, I hope that uh, makes sense. This was an interesting discussion or excursion into uh, into the source code of binary. Let's jump back here to binary, right? So we were at binary, but but again, you have binary, unary, and nary, and these are ways of forcing a function to accept exactly some uh, particular number of arguments. Let's jump to the next one. Next one is bind. Ah, so actually, this ties in well with the, what we talked about now, uh, or, or what I alluded to when I said that the source code of nary passes this when, when it calls the function. 